Hey, this is Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils and we have a lot going on today. We're showing you how to paint flowers in two different color schemes to either give yourself a subtle farmhouse look or something really bright and bold. You're going to want to see how we do it. Today we're going to do half of the sign in one color scheme and half of the sign in another color scheme. One is going to be really simple. The other one is going to have lots of colors and design and I'm excited to dive right in. So we are starting with a very large square surface today. Our surface today is 18 inches and we have a very large 18 inch floral wreath stencil. And then we'll also be using our Highland Cow that is going to go on top of it along with our Highland Cow stencil to help give us some details. So let's talk about how we get started with this. This isn't necessarily a technique that you're going to have to know how to do on a square because it's probably not going to be very often that you would paint two sides of a square a different color. However, it is something you might do on a round. So it is important to know how to do this in case you ever decide to do the two different colors on a round. So what I'm going to do is on my square, I'm going to come up here and mark my midpoint. And that is one of the lovely things about the T-squares. You can mark your midpoints. And then I'm going to come up here and draw my line across my midpoint. So now we have our line. And then I'm going to grab my tape. So we're going to use stretchy tape. And we are going to bring it right across that line. We are going to stretch it nice and tight. Rip it off here and then really press it down with our fingernails to get it on there nice and straight along the line to give us our straight line to paint. So now we are ready to paint. So since I put it on this side of the line, this is the side we are going to paint first. And then once we're done with this side, we'll let it dry and then switch the tape and then paint the other side. Something to think about when doing this. I often like to paint this way when I am base coating because I have a lot of space to move my elbow. However, when you have something taped down, you will want to pull the paint away from it. So for painting a half of a project, we are going to paint it short side just so we can do our best not to get our paint underneath our tape. So let's talk about where we get the inspiration for our project. So for this project, we were flipping through some catalogs and I saw a project that had some really bright floral, designs in the background and then it had a cow head and the cow head was painted very pretty. So that's where this started. And then as I started searching through some pictures online, you can go to Pinterest and look up um, cow decor with flowers. So then I started seeing some dark designs with just a little pop of color with the the cow and then some different options for the colorful flowers and then I found one that had a really beautiful highland cow with lots of different browns for his hair so then I cut that's kind of how it started with a picture and then moved around with color options and design options to get to where we are today. My two colors I'm going to do is white number 27 on one side and navy blue number 72 on the other. We're using our polyfoam brush coming to our project and just doing some basic base coating. However, there are some notes that you'll want to take when coming up against a piece of tape. So you will go to the edge of the tape and just feather it very lightly. I'm not pressing down very hard. The harder you press down, the bigger the chances you will get paint underneath your tape. 
So when I, when I go get paint on my foam brush and then I come over to my project, I start in the middle and then once I have some of it off and it's not as wet and goopy, then I'll come back up to my taped area and start getting closer to that tape. So without applying a lot of pressure, I'm going to use the edge of my poly foam brush just to get right up against that tape. And then it fills in that little space, that gap between the tape and your surface. And then you'll have a nice straight line when we pull this off. Okay, we have three coats of white on our project. I wanted it really bright and bold so we can get those flowers to really pop off of it. So now it's time to take the tape off and there is a trick that you'll want to do when you're taking your tape off of the painted area. You are going to kind of fold it into a little bit of a triangle and pull it away from you. And you pull it straight up and look at that bold, crisp, beautiful line. I love it! And I love when that works. So you will really want to make sure that you put that tape down on there really, really good. Run your fingernail over it so there's no way that your paint can get underneath of it. So now we need to paint the other side of our project. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. You do want to make sure that the part that you've already painted is nice and dry before you put tape on it. Otherwise, when you peel the tape off, there is a chance you'll peel your paint off. I'm gonna turn this around. It's easier for me to tape this way. So I'm gonna grab my tape and this time when we're taping, we are taping right up to the edge of that line. So I'm just gonna have an itty bitty bit of white showing. What I don't want to happen is for there to be a little spot of brown between it. On the navy side, we are looking for more of a rustic, farmhouse, traditional, neutral project. So I'm going to do it more chippy and however it ends up, it ends up and we're just going to do one layer. Oh, okay, so problem. I just pulled my paint over here. It dripped onto the white. So now I have a navy spot onto the white. Since our paint is still fresh, there is a potential that we can get a paper towel, get some water on it. I'm not gonna put it in my water bucket because the water in my bucket is dirty from paint. It's always good to have some water here to the side and I'm going to dab it up and wipe it off. And it is smearing a little, but there we go. So if something like that happens, if you jump at it really quick, you can potentially get it cleaned off. Now, if you can't get it cleaned off, then you'll want to grab another one of your sponges and then just base coat over it and hide it. You, depending on if it's a lot of paint and if it's raised and clumpy, then you may have to sand a little bit, but you can always go back and base coat and be good to go. Okay, so as we come to our second side, I'm gonna show you a different way that you can create a straight line. So all of our stencils are cut on a laser, so they are very nice and straight. I got a full sheet of our Mylar palette, which is very long and is a great masker. So for this side, what we'll do is I have the, the Mylar lined up right to the edge of our white background. I have it taped over here so it's not going to go anywhere. And then we're going to come to our project and start base coating. And just like with our tape, we are going to, once we get to the edge, be very careful sweeping away with just a little bit of paint pulling towards us so we're not shoving paint under that mylar. We're just feathering in as close as we can get to that edge. Notice I am still holding this mylar down because we do not have it taped down on the front. 
And with this side of the project, we're gonna do it a little more farmhouse, a little more rustic, so we're not going to be as concerned about the coverage of our base coating. We're going to do one layer and leave it how it is. One thing that you can do if you are wanting to do a one half one color, one half the other, is base coat the entire surface in one color and then tape down and base your one half so then you don't have to move the tape twice because that is a little bit of a tedious portion of this is taping down twice and trying to get two really crisp straight lines. Once again, we're kind of doing what we can to get most of the paint off before coming close to that mylar, holding that mylar down and then pulling the paint away from it to keep it away from getting underneath the edge. And then we'll see once we're done if this line is as clean as the taped one. And then know for the future what works best. Now I'm just going along the edge. Since we're not really worried about the coverage on this side, I'm not being particular about the base coating, except I do want the edge to be base coated pretty well, just to have established that line. Let's see how it looks. I'm going to pull this here. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It is definitely not as crisp and clean as what the tape is. So there are a few little marks here that it bled under a little bit. So I would probably recommend base coating all in one color, taping down, and then base coating again over top of it. It is going to take a little more time, but it will give you that nice clean line rather than trying to do it twice. So let's get this blow dried and then we'll start stenciling. For this project, it isn't really going to impact me because we're showing, you know, a side by side of what you could do. But if you do paint a top and a bottom in a different color and you are unhappy with how it looks, there is a simple solution. Grab one of your tea towel stencils or one of your small stripe stencils and then just paint a little stripe. You can make a band, you can make it the same color. Since these are laser cut, you could go here, put this down, make sure that there's a little bit of white on all of it, tape it down and then paint this your navy blue and then that will give you your laser cut straight line. So there are a couple of different options, just using the stencils and things that you have and then being mindful that when you are doing this, you will use your dome brush and you will slowly go across your line. You could even put some stick and re-stick on the back of it to make sure that it is down and secure on your project so you can prevent that bleeding under. So next on our list is to start stenciling our background flowers. But I want to take a minute to talk about placement and design and really thinking this through. So I have our stencil on our surface. It has the etching showing you that you got it at studior12.com where you can get more than 7,000 stencil designs. It also has the skew for that stencil and the size number. So we have it on here and this is how it was designed to be straight. However, on the right side here, I am planning to use a lot of different colors. So I want more flower options on this side than on the left side. So if I turn it around, this gives me, let's start here, because I like this little guy. Gives me a lot of different flowers. However, when I do that, this one is upside down. So, not only are we going to turn the stencil, we are going to flip it upside down. And so now this is going up in the direction that it should, and we are going to tape it down and get to painting. Okay, so we have our stencil taped down. I did tape it in all four corners. I did also tape right down the middle of my project to act as a mask. So what this will do is as we're going on this left side, I can easily paint this in one color. 
And then once we move to the right side and we're using a bunch of different colors and had a lot, have a lot of movement, that's where I'm going to grab the Studio R12 Multi-Masker and then just move it around as I want to mask to let the color flow on this side. We are ready to get into our flowers on the left side and we are using color number 22, which is just a, a little bit of a cream color. Grabbing a dome brush. We love a dome brush when stenciling because the shape of the dome can really be beneficial in helping to prevent bleeding under. If you have a flat brush and you're applying a lot of pressure, the edges of that flat brush are going to potentially splay underneath your stencil and that is where the bleeding comes in. So when you're using a dome brush, the center of the brush is all that is really touching your project. So that's one important thing about not bleeding under. The second is you get some paint on your brush, just a little, you come over to a paper towel and you do what we call offloading. You can swirl it 10 to 15 times or you can move it back and forth just to get the paint off your brush. So I did that excessively just to show you. Coming back to my brush, coming back to my paint. So how do you know if it's okay? On my hand here, as I am testing this, you can barely see it. It's just a whisper of paint. And so that's how you know it's okay. If it's wet and it's goopy, it means you have too much paint on your brush. So then you come to your project and we are going to very lightly swirl. I am hardly applying any pressure. I am holding my stencil down as I move across here, just because there are so many moving parts to the stencil. When you get into straight lines, you can kind of color back and forth, but you can see this is just a really light dusting of paint. It's not wet, it is not goopy. We are decreasing our chances of bleeding under. I'm gonna go back to my paint. Every time you put paint on your brush, you come over and you offload. Another way that you can tell if you have too much paint on your brush is going to be when you come to your project and you start swirling. If you can see swirl marks on your project, that means you have too much paint on your brush. And the beauty of swirling is that this is already dry up at top. So once we get down to the bottom, when we are ready to do our second layer, it's already dry. And then we don't have to wait for it to dry. Now that does change if you are going to stipple, which is an up and down tapping motion. I like to do that when I'm looking for more of a full coverage. We'll probably do that on some of the flowers on the other side that we're going to do in bright colors. But for this side and for our first layer for sure, we're always going to do just a light swirl. So let's peel this back so you can see that it's just really nice and dusty. And you know what? I think I'm gonna leave that as this. So we are going to tape this down. Our left side is done. Let's take this middle tape off because now it is time to start using our multi-maskers. I am going to get out a lot of different colors for this and we are just going to pick and choose as we go what colors. So I'm gonna tell you all the colors up front and then I'm just going to dabble into them along the way. Number 61 number 26, number 30, number 68, and number 24. So these are all of our bright pinks and purples. I do need to get a couple of greens out. So I'm gonna use a number 43, which is the lighter green, and a number 42, which is the darker green. And we are going to use our small brushes, our dome brushes. We have five different sizes of dome brushes, and they go from itty bitty, teeny tiny, to our five eights. Our five eights is our biggest and it is by far our most popular because you can see how quick I got this whole left side of the project done. But when you are painting small details, the biggest brush is not gonna be your best friend because you want to be able to get in there with a little color. You wanna have a little more control and a little more precision when it comes to your paint colors. Okay, took a little coffee break. We did a little rearranging with our palette so that my Paint was on the left side, closer to my hand and closer to the left side of the project. I think we're ready to go. I do want to give you a tip when you are using Studio R12 stencils. Our design team does a tremendous job at 
giving you inspiration on how to use our stencils. So for the last couple years, as of 2024, when we've been making our designs and we put the stencils on our website, we offer some mock-ups and designs and painted pictures to show you what you could achieve with these designs. So this will give you color inspiration. It will give you mix and match with your stencil ideas. And so for this design, what I did was I popped it up on my phone and now I can see what was used for flowers, what was used for um, leaves, some pops of color that were used along the way and how it looks finished. So then if I'm like, do I wanna paint this as a leaf or do I wanna paint this as a flower? Then I can reference it, reference it on my phone and go along with it. So this is something that is super beneficial. And then we also have videos. So if we have used this stencil in another project that we have filmed, we will have a video for it so that you can easily go watch how we've painted it before. And then we've also started recently adding in customer photos. So every week we ask customers to share their photos on our Facebook page of projects they've been working on. And when they have been using Studio R12 stencils, we will add our stencil fan photos to the website just to give you some additional design ideas and see what other artists are doing with their projects because we get a ton of inspiration from you guys. And so we wanted to share that as well. Let's get back into painting. So I wanna see where I am. I'm gonna turn this upside down because that's actually how it looks on my project. Okay. So we're gonna start with this flower here at the bottom. I want my biggest flower in my main color to be this really dark burgundy shade. So I'm going to go into a medium sized brush because the holes of this are not super small, this size. This is a one half inch. And it looks like this one's kind of old and has been tapered and maybe cut a little bit. And these brushes, as long as you take care of them, they are gonna last and last and last. So this is where the multi-masker comes in. And it has a bunch of different shapes that you can go along your design to help prevent ghosting under. So ghosting is when you get paint maybe where you don't want it in another part of your stencil. So I have my masker here. I'm gonna line it up with the straight edge. And I am swirling. So one thing to think about when you are doing multiple colors, it can be tricky to remember what you have painted, what color, if you put a bunch of colors out on your palette like I am doing now. If you are wanting to go back and do a really bold look on some of your designs. So if you're gonna put out a lot of colors, you might want to just grab a color and go with the flow and see how it looks and do a light dusty layer. But if you want them bold, you are going to have to wait for it to dry, stick with it and do one flower at a time if you don't think that you can remember what color you used. And I think that I know this one's going to be my bold, but I don't know if I'll be able to remember along the line what other colors I use. So I'm probably going to do one flower at a time. And I did get into a stippling and tapping motion because with the intricacy and design of all of this, this is going to be a stencil that's going to take a while to paint if you are doing multiple colors. The stippling does get it done faster but it also increases your chances of bleeding under because you are applying more pressure, you're pushing more paint up into your brush and it can bleed under if you are not careful and if you are not coming to your paper towel and offloading. So I'm going to pull this back and do a little peek at our overhead camera to show you what that looks like after a layer of swirl and a layer of stipple. So it is a little more bold than what our cream was, but it is not super duper bold. I'm going to do one more layer. I don't know that I'll do three layers on all of them along the way, just for time's sake, but I do want to show you 
what three layers looks like here. And there we go, look how bright and bold that is and it really pops off that white background. One thing we did not talk about when we were trying to line up where we wanted our stencil was that we are going to layer something over top of it. So a dry run, a dry fit before you completely do it will also be something that's going to be helpful because I would have been really sad if this really pretty flower that is kind of my focal flower on this side was covered up by that head. So then at that point, if it is, you could always move it up and down. But for wanting it in the center, you'll want to make sure that part of your design, especially the part you love the most, isn't covered up. So now we're going to move on to some of our other flowers. I'm going to go into all of these little berries. I am going to use the same brush. So since we are in the same color palette, using the same brush is something that I am okay to do. Since the first one here is really close to this big bold one, I'm going to pick one that's not a super similar color. So these two are more of our dark colors. These are more of our light ones. I think I'm gonna go into our brightest pink and I am going to definitely get the multi-masker here. One cool thing about the multi-masker is it does have some circles, which is beneficial to help us not ghost in other parts of our project. So you can put the, the circle right on the circle, get your paint exactly where you want it. All right, so those are done. We're gonna come up to our next ones, I'm gonna choose the larger circle for this. I still haven't added more paint to my brush. I most certainly could to get a little bolder of a color, but I also don't want to increase my chances of bleeding under. All right, so let's get into our next pink. I'm going to go here, and since we went with this one, I'm gonna go back into my dark one. I am going to use the same brush. Has a little bit of the, the both pinks in it, so then it's going to kind of bring it all into the, ooh, way too much paint on that brush. Look at all those swirl marks there. And that is definitely what we don't want to happen. So as you continue to use your brush, know that you are going to have more paint on your brush and that the more paint that's on your brush, the bigger the chance of bleeding under. So we will come here and then let's pull this back and see if we did in fact bleed under. We did not, but it does look really goopy, so we'll make sure that we put a couple of layers of this on there to help even it out. Um, where else do I wanna do this color? So it is very similar. It's not very different than the one beside it where I've been using the same brush. So I am gonna add a little more purple in here. And being mindful that we are using our multi-masker so that we are covering up the areas that we don't want to get paint in. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then we'll come back to it. And I'm going to come over to these little bulbs and we're gonna make them purple as well. And this is where two multi-maskers is going to come in handy. So now I'm gonna have two multi-maskers and I'm just going to tuck it right around. So a lot of these pinks are looking similar because we're only doing a couple of layers. The more layers that you add, the more their natural color will kind of show. Like you can tell when these are all side by side that they are in the same family, but they don't look exactly the same. But when you're not doing them very bold on your project, they do look a little more similar. Okay, so we're going to come back up to here and this has dried a bit. I'm gonna come back into our purple. All right, so now we're just gonna to continue to go to our next color. It is time to get a new paper towel. So we use two paper towels, we fold them in half, and then you can continue to fold in half or you can grab a new set. The brush is pretty wet at this point, so I can either do my best to offload here and get some of that extra paint out or you can get another one. This size has worked pretty well for the size of flowers we've been working with. 
Um, a color that I haven't used, let's go into this one. And we're gonna come over to this flower. And there's just a slight variation in all of these when you look at them. So there's some that are a little darker purple, some that are a little more pink. Peaking is always a good idea on projects like this. I used to hate peaking because I hated relining up my stencil. However, if you make mistakes, time is of the essence. We have a video on how to fix your stenciling mistakes and peaking is <clears throat> really the the best option for fixing them so that you can get them fixed quickly before the paint dries and cures. All right, I am still not happy with the coverage of this, so I'm gonna know that I want to go back to this and that it was that purple. I'm gonna come into this pink here beside, I'm going to offload a little bit more and then come into this bold pink to go beside where I was and use our masker. So it's just really uh, moving along, making decisions as you go. So I have this bold flower down here and I think I want to do the bold up here again. However, I am going to go into a new brush because I don't want those other colors mixed in. I want my, my really bold flower just to have that really dark, bold tint to it. And I'm going to say thank goodness for multi-maskers on this project. If we would not have a multi-masker and I would have to tape this project to mask it, I can guarantee we would not be doing this video because it would be super duper tedious to have to tape and move and tape and move and tape and move all the live long day. I'm gonna leave this over here to the side. So if you are not going to be using your brush for a couple of minutes, or if you are using a different brush for every color, you'll want to put that brush in a flip top baggie and wrap it really nice and tight to help keep that brush damp until you're ready to use it again. If you let the brush dry out, it is going to harden with all that paint on it. You won't be able to really use it on your project until you clean it and then you're gonna have to wait for it to dry. So luckily for us, we work for a stencil company and we have an abundance of brushes everywhere. I'm gonna go back into this purple and come here and try to get a little more even coverage on this bold flower. And then, I think I have two flowers left. I'm gonna bring that this dark purple down to this one. And this is where we'll want to use our multi-masker with it being part of the navy blue project as well. So we're using our multi-masker here for a couple reasons. We are preventing getting paint on the other flowers, but also preventing getting paint on the other side of our project where that flower also is. So part of this flower is on one side, part of it is on another. And then we did just ghost, so this is a good time. Let me show you one way to fix ghosting. So I'm going to pull this back and switch my tape over and just fold it back for a second. And we have a super handy tool, our click eraser. And these come in several different colors for the outside. I'm going to dip it into my water and get it a little wet, dab it off on my paper towel, and then come over to my project. So if you do the click eraser while it's dry, it's not going to erase your paint at all. With it being wet, it erased that spot easy peasy, but it is something that you do have to do your peaking for because if the paint is there for more than a couple of minutes, maybe five at max, then it will dry and cure and you won't be able to erase it and you'll have to base coat over it. And I don't remember what other colors I used around this area, so I just picked one up. So another thing to think about if you're going to put all your colors out at once, you might want to just put one out at a time and then paint what you want. 
think all of the flowers are painted. So now we will put our pink brushes away. If this was a project that I was hanging in my home or a project that I was going to be selling, I would do a few more layers of each of those colors to make them really bright and bold. This is one of our growth charts and flowers on this are really bright and they're really bold and they really pop. We did have to use a few layers of the paint on them. So to make that really bold and make it really pop, then you'll want to take the time to add more. All right, so let's get into our greenery. This is going to be the same as when we were painting our flowers. I am just going to go back and forth, pick and choose between the greenery, and you could add a little bit of cream or white to one of these colors, or even find a lighter green that's in the same family if you want to have multiple colors like you do with the flowers, or you could use one greenery color just to make this process go a little faster. So now that we are painting our greenery, I am just kind of walking up through my project and doing like every other, every other one is going to be this dark green. And then I'll go back with my light green and do every other one. If I accidentally ghost over into one, I'm not really gonna worry about it and I'll just continue that color um, just because I don't have an exact color pattern that I'm trying to follow. And I'm going to say for all you perfectionists out there, I think stenciling has been one of the best things for me for becoming a recovering perfectionist because it has taught me that things might not always go the way you want and that you can make changes, you can go back and fix things, you can mix and match. So it has uh, really been beneficial. We always talk about painting being good for your mental health and I can definitely attest to that. Okay, so I'm going to not use this brush for my lighter color because I do want the lighter color to look a little bit different. I'm gonna once again fold over my paper towel, come to my lighter color and just start going over all of the ones that we haven't done. Since we are using the smaller brush, it is definitely beneficial to not have to use the multi-masker nearly as much because you have so much control and precision as to where your paint is going. You have a couple options when you're getting here down to the side. Some of these are coming over from one part to the other. You could paint those if you want to make them go off the edge or you can just leave them clear. I think I'm just gonna leave them be and not paint them. Let's peel off this tape and we are going to do our reveal and voila. So now you can see what this would look like with just a really basic neutral colors compared to what it would look like with pops of different colors with our pinks and our mauves and a little bit of purple in there. And to show the difference of how the flowers pop with color compared to they're there, but they're more of a, a subtle decoration rather than the main focal point of your project. Okay, so now it's time to paint the cow for our project. This is another project that we have done with our Highland cow. And you can see we had a plank surface. We added a little pattern here. We have our welcome, we have our cow. The cow is hanging off the edge. So this is just another way that you can use these wood embellishments to build up your project. Let the, let the embellishments hang off. We did it on a round surface. So there's lots of different options of mixing, matching surfaces, paint colors, stencils, all of that together to really make unique projects. So with this one, Patty did a really dark cow and added some lighter hair to it. I am going to do a 
middle color brown for mine and then just like with the pinks use a bunch of different browns to add in the hair and I do think I'm going to get one more nope I think I'm going to go with this one so the colors that we are using I'm going to start with a number 44 as the base coat for this and then my lighter colors are 84 and 38, and my darker colors are 31 and 17. So if you're new here, let's talk about what I just said with all of those paint colors. We have a Studio R12 paint color guide. Since we use Sherwin-Williams house paint and we buy and paint in bulk, we wanted to give our stencil fans an easy access to paint colors because a lot of times picking your paint colors can be the hardest part. So when I say we are painting with a number 38, you can get our Studio R12 paint color guide. You can see number 38 is here. It tells you a corresponding color for deco art, a corresponding color for Sherwood Williams, and then it also has some other color theory information for you. And it's really a useful tool when you are picking colors or just wanna push the easy button and paint things similar to, similar to what we did. So I'm gonna start with my number 44. I'm going to use a foam brush, but I'm also going to use some sponges here. So let's start with a foam brush and let me tell you why I'm going to do a little bit of both. So this is a nice neutral color. It's very similar to the color of the MDF surface. When you are painting wood projects that have a lot of little intricate designs, it can be really difficult not to bleed over and make a mess. So for this center portion, this foam brush is really good for covering a lot of ground. However, when you get into edges and different parts, then you can grab a jumbo dauber or an ink sweeper and really get in there and avoid your bleeding over the edge. And they really just cover a lot of area in a really short time and help keep your project's edges clean. You will still wanna offload just like we're doing with our stenciling, especially when you're working on the edges because you don't potentially want to bleed over the edge. So the one reason that we're doing that is with this cow head, it has a lot of little nooks and crannies. And since it already has that black edge around it, I don't want to get brown paint in there because there's a chance I'm not going to be able to fit a brush into that nook and cranny to get it rebase coated, either black or brown, depending on what you would want. All right, so he is nice and base coated. I'm gonna go through here and just pick up a little paint and sweep through. Since he is gonna have some hair, I'm not super concerned about this being really even for the paint because he is going to have a lot of different layers. When you are done with your ink sweeper jumbo dauber and you will want to make sure it is sunk completely in the water so that it can stay damp until you're ready to clean it out. And to do that, we will get one of our brushes that we're not using and put the base of the brush into the back of the Jumbo Dauber Ink Sweeper. And then we will use the brush as a weight to sink that down. If the sponge portion of your Jumbo Dauber Ink Sweeper or any of your sponges that have the paint on them are not fully submerged, that paint will dry and become really crusty and you'll have a hard time getting it out. And those aren't expensive applicators. However, if you take care of them properly, you don't have to buy them over and over again. So one cool thing about our Highland Cow, we have our surface, but we also have corresponding stencil. So you could use this Highland Cow stencil on a square or a rectangle or a circle or any surface and just paint a Highland Cow. And then you could add on the part two 
and give it the details and the depth. However, we thought ahead when we were doing this and since we were making a surface, the stencil for the details fits right on our surface. So you can use this together, you can use it separate, and it's really cool that they work together so that you can paint it on a flat surface or paint it on this raised surface. All right, so let's get some of these other colors out here. And when it comes to painting things like this, I don't have cows. I have seen some of these cows and they're super duper cute, but I don't know their colors. So I will get on Google and I'll look up a image of a Highland cow. I will look up paintings of Highland cows just to get some design ideas of colors. Really any browns are gonna work and you can make them more of a red brown or you can make them more of <clears throat> um, regular brown. So it really, there are different options for you. With this stencil being a bit larger than our surface, I am not going to tape it down. You could tape it down here in a couple of the open spaces just so it doesn't move or you can hold it down as you go. I do want to get out a black, our number 28, to paint his eyes. So I'm just going to go into a random color here, offload and come to our project. And since this is hair that we're painting, instead of swirling or stippling, I am going to kind of color it just like you would with a beard or with hair. Patty's video that she did with the Highland Cow is really wonderful and I highly recommend it. She is really great at painting hair and beards and different things and has some really great design ideas on how to really make that look natural. I am just going to show you what it looks like when we follow our stencil. And I've gone into one color, now I'm just gonna start going into other colors and I'm gonna dirty brush, meaning I'm using the same brush over and over again. I am offloading. So now this one is a little bit lighter than our background. However, a lot of these colors are similar. You could mix and match them to make even more colors. So we got some that are lighter, some that are darker, and just going over all of the little open spots and maybe putting a few streaks of one in the middle of the other after using them. So let's see what it looks like now. So we've just done a couple layers and check out, you can see We've got some hair. Now we do have some spots where I have too much paint on my brush and I have a little bit of bleeding under, but with this being a rustic project, that's going to be okay because we are going to sand it before we are finished. So let me show you something else we are going to do. I actually already had one of these cut that we had used for Patty's project on my desk. I'm going to flip the stencil over and I am going to give myself a second layer of hair in some different spots so that if you're not comfortable adding on the hair manually, this gives you a second layer. Two things to note when you do this. You will want to blow dry your project completely. You will also want to make sure if you're flipping your stencil over that your stencil is completely dry. The paint on there needs to be dried as well. So you want to be very cautious that everything is dry so that you're not pulling wet paint and making streaks on your project. So now we're gonna put this on the opposite way of what it was and give ourselves some different hair. So I'm not gonna do the ears because they were in a specific spot, but I am going to go 
over some of those hair spots and I'm gonna do some of the light colors. And this is just going to give us some extra layers, extra color in here. I do still have to do the eye and the nose. I'll go into my darker. Make sure you're offloading really well. Because the places that get messy, the places that I noticed that I had a little bit of the bleeding under were the corners. So if you're not offloading very well, the corners are going to trap that paint from your brush. Since I have the horns on here, I do want to paint the horns a lighter brown. I'm gonna stick this brush to the side. I think I'm going to grab an ink sweeper and I'm going to go into my light color, offload, and paint the edges a lighter so they look more like a horn. So you could do this with or without the stencil on. We'll leave the stencil on so you can see kind of the, the hair going into it and covering it. And we just wanna get a nice layer Go in and get a second dab of paint. And I also want to use the same color for my nose. So I'm gonna get a different brush, come into the light color, and I'm just gonna do this really light. This is actually more of like a, a purplish, which works really well with the more flesh tone for the cow. And then since I have this stencil here already, I'm gonna go ahead and do the eye on the right side and do it opposite. I am dirty brushing. So we come over here, we put in our black, we wipe it off, we put in our black again, and you can see that as we do this, there's less gray and more black. And just depending on the size of your brush, you might have to be careful not to ghost over because that hairline is very close. So now we're gonna come here and I'm going to, once all of our paint is dry, go into my sand block and go ahead and sand him down. And then you can get into some of those areas that you bled into, bled under, and you can give them a little bit of extra attention to make him look a little more rustic there. Or you can leave them there and they look like extra wisps of hair. All right, so let's clean this up. We are at the finishing steps, our cow is painted. Now we need to add him to our project. And to do that, we are going to use the Aileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. We love this one because it sits on its nose. And we'll shake it up and go ahead and put glue all the way around. We don't like to get too close to the edge so that it doesn't bleed under. And one thing you wanna keep in mind when you are using the glue is that it will take some time to dry and set. I can't tell you how many times we have tried to glue something on and then we hold it up and our embellishment just slides right down. So keep that in mind when you are gluing. So let's bring this surface closer and you can do a couple of things here. You can measure it to go right in the center. You can kind of eyeball it. I'm going to eyeball today and put him where I want him. And then just push him down. All right, let's take a look at our finished project and show you the difference in these two looks. So if we cover this up over here, look how pretty and neutral that is. The brown really pops off the navy blue and is just a really subtle, beautiful look of flowers and farm. But then you come over to this side and those pinks really pop off that background and 
make it a lot more of a feminine and pretty project. I hope you guys love this video. It was a really fun project to do, lots of lessons involved, and if you would like to get some more lessons on crafting, DIY, stenciling, and painting, be sure to subscribe to the Studio R12 Stencils YouTube channel, ring the bell so you can be notified anytime we add new lessons. Thank you.